Now, I understand why the original Victoria's Secret fashion show ended. However, I don't know who thought this approach to coming back would be a good idea. That's it. That's my intro. I'm Amanda Watching Small Entertainment. Today, we are talking about the tour, the return of the Victoria's Secret fashion show. First time since 2016. Sorry, I got confirmation. The New York Times confirmed that the last time the Victoria's Secret fashion show happened was 2018. I don't know why I thought it was 2016, but I blame lockdown making my brain mush when it comes to time. So there's a variety of reasons of why the Victoria's Secret fashion show ended in 2018. Um, predominantly, there was a lot of call outs for how um, ininclusive it was. The Victoria's Secret fashion show returns, but not as you knew it, from the New York Times written by Vanessa Friedman. For more than 20 years, the show had been an annual event, an extravaganza of babes in Thongland like Barbie through the lens of Paul Verhoeven. Broadcast in more than 100 countries to millions of viewers, it got ever more absurdist until the hashtag MeToo movement and social change finally brought the curtain down along with the profits, meaning the company wrestling with just how out of step with women's sense of self it had become. The company retired the signature angels in their push-up bras and panties toting around ginormous 30-pound wings and replace them with the Victoria VS Collective, a group of 10 women of notable accomplishments and notably diverse body types. It announced that it wanted to be the world's leading advocate for women. And then on Wednesday, Victoria's Secret finally brought back the show. Sort of. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Aura. You would be shocked to learn how much of your personal data is available online, and I am not just talking about those embarrassing selfies you took in middle school. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and more people who want to know more about you. This information could be your full legal name, your birthday, your spending habits, and even where you live. The thing is, is that these brokers are legally required to remove this information if you ask them to, but they make it incredibly difficult to do so. That's where Aura comes in. Aura is here to help protect you and your family from threats online that you can and can't see. It's super easy to set up, so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and so much more. You get everything at one affordable price. Get on top of your personal private information with Aura today. Go to aura.com swell to get started on a two week free trial, or you can click the link in the description box or click the QR code that's been on screen. And thank you again to Aura for sponsoring this video. There was a lot of talk about how this was going to, you know, work, how it was going to look. More than anything, anyone who wants the Victoria's Secret fashion show to come back, want it back as it was with more diverse models. That's it. They still want the glamour of the Victoria's Secret fashion show. There was something fun about that. I still watch the uh, Taylor Swift Fallout Boy one. Victoria'sSecret.com Get in on the now, introducing the, new, the Victoria's Secret World Tour. We're proud to pioneer a global fashion event, film, and celebration that leads audiences through the behind-the-scenes artistic process and personal narratives of the VS20, a group of innovative creatives from around the world who represent four fashion creations from the vibrant cities of Bogota, Lagos, London, and Tokyo, with the creative freedom to conceptualize, produce, and stage a collection that is all their own. The dynamic artistic forces from the fashion, film, design, music, and visual fields will converge to showcase their work that centers on the appreciation of beauty and beauty of womanhood. Now, this is going to be airing September 26th on Prime Video. Discover our remarkable cast from our from iconic names to up and coming artists featured in the soon to be released special. Now on the website, I do like the different, the house of Tokyo, the house of Lagos, all of that showing the different designers and the different artists and everything that goes into the different groups, the different houses. I like that a lot. This is the article that I've been seeing going around a lot about this from the cut. The Victoria's Secret show could have been an email by Hannah Flanagan. Good try Victoria's Secret. Seriously, since it's fall from grace back in 2019, the controversy plagued lingerie brand has poured massive amounts of time and money into a full-blown rebrand from finally embracing body diversity and canceling the once iconic Victoria's Secret fashion show. The inclusive marketing strategy has been met with criticism and skepticism, but Victoria's Secret doesn't seem to mind. The brand has shown no signs of pumping the brakes and seems bound and determined to make a comeback. So when I received an invitation to its glitzy New York Fashion Week event, I was intrigued and excited. What better way for Victoria's Secret to silence the haters and prove that executives have acknowledged the criticism and complaints from their customers? The fashion industry under dog had a huge opportunity to get back on top. And as someone who once worshipped the altar of the fantasy bra, I was rooting for it. Unfortunately, the highly anticipated event fell flat. Side. All I knew ahead of time was that it was taking place in a Manhattan center. It was not a seated show and there would be a live performance. Fast forward to last night, I arrived at the venue and walked past a pink 
carpet where Victoria's Secret darlings like Taylor Hill and Adriana Lima were doing interviews. Inside, the larger than life set design featuring the brand's signature angel wings was quite impressive, though it did in fact re resemble that of Rihanna's 2019 Savage X Fenty show, as the internet pointed out last week. So Rihanna's Savage X Fenty show was kind of a big moment, I would say, in underwear, lingerie, as well as model inclusivity. Was that the first time I saw a pregnant model on stage walk a runway? I think so. I could be wrong. That's just personally, in my personal memory, I believe that was the first time that I had seen a pregnant model uh, walk a stage. That show was a massive deal and it was very well done and it was spoken about how well done it was. And so there had been a lot of comments from people that were fans of Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, like, see, you don't have to get rid of the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. You can just do this. Look at how these models all look stunning. They look amazing. This is a beautiful show. And the fantasy is not gone, basically, because that was the claims that were made for years. Let me get a side by side. Let me pull up the uh, Savage X Fenty show. Oh yeah, even down to the, a I didn't even remember the uh, window display that they did. Can I copy your fashion show? God, they had the big um, archways that a lot of the girls were in to show different designs. And they also had that in the promo for the tour for Victoria's Secret this year. Yep, lots of, lots of atriums. Now, obviously I wasn't there, so I have to rely on these articles and some other uh, people's experiences there because I wanted to talk about this because I do think there's a way you could do this without copying Savage XNT. <laughs> I soon realized I was surrounded by my For You page and we're walking around the ground floor while models and celebrities, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize this. That's so funny that they had two different levels for like the influencers and then like traditional celebrities. That's so funny to me. Did anyone sneak into the second level? Did anyone get in? Who got in? I really wanna know now. Ooh. The presentation or show performance, I'm not sure, opened in dramatic fashion with a single spotlight on Naomi Campbell reading a poem from the rafters. She was introduced by Gigi Hadid. Next was a short preview of a new Victoria's Secret presented film called The Tour 23. I stood there along with hundreds of other guests, marveling at the massive screen above me as music pounded my eardrums from all directions. Last release, Victoria's Secret described it as a reimagination of the brand's iconic fashion show celebrating women and global creatives that will take audiences on a journey through the behind the scenes craft and intimate stories of VS20, a group of 20 innovative global creatives who will conceive four fashion creations from the vibrant cities of Bogota, Lagos, London, and Tokyo alongside iconic custom Victoria's Secrets design. But it was definitely giving IMAX. The full film will be released September 26th on Amazon Prime, which of course we will tune in for and are very interested to see. I kept waiting with bated breath for the fashion icons in attendance to appear on stage, strut down the stairs, pose, or do anything at all. Alas, they did not. Despite being in the building, in costume, and in character, the Victoria's Secret dolls gave us nothing. Instead, the night ended with performances from Deutsche and Goyo. I love both, don't get me wrong, but it was a bit disappointing considering the incredible production value of past Victoria's Secret fashion shows. All in all, the event missed the mark. I wanted a spectacle that felt just as glamorous and high budget as the iconic early aught shows starring Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, and Giselle Bündchen. Only more inclusive and acceptable. But what I got was something that could have been an email. Next, we have an article from Women's Wear Daily from Kristen Tower. Victoria's Secret rolled out the pink carpet at the Manhattan Center on Wednesday night. The brand hosted a party to celebrate its new fashion show reimagined video format as the tour. And while the Victoria's Secret runway of 2023 looks quite different from its heyday, one aspect remained the same. There was plenty of lingerie on display. And as an unexpected upside, the unofficial dress code was ideal for nearly 100 degree weather. The brand comes from a tumultuous history for sure, said Priyanka Chopra, commenting on the brand's recent pivot. There was a time when the brand told people what women should look like. And I think now that what they're trying to do is champion people and individuals to be as they are. This is a good quote from a uh, model Adwoa. We had this wing moment where we all saw the wings at the model recounting her time on set in Barcelona. There's this idea that when Victoria's Secret decided they wanted to change that no one wanted to have wings anymore. But actually there's something to say about who's wearing the wings. I saw girls, trans girls, black girls, bigger girls, Asian. I saw so many different girls trying on these wings, walking in Victoria's Secret clothes. And that was an amazing moment for me, she said. Because what's important is how we can redefine sexiness, whatever that word is, whatever we associate with underwear. How can we redefine that to feel more like it relates to us instead of something that's just thrown onto us by mass media. Fashion Week is very fun for me, even as someone who doesn't get invited to Fashion Week, because I, though I'm still figuring out how to style myself, because I don't know how to style myself, because I didn't have good influences on style in my life. I don't know. I love fashion. I love different things. And I love different things that come out of different fashion shows. And so I like now that more influencers and bloggers and all of that get invited because they post things.
in the way that, you know, a lot of celebrities don't post the way that they go to shows, which I like because I get to see more of it. It's a little more open. Though I don't believe I know any influencers personally that went to the Victoria's Secret show, this one. Um, it was very documented online and discussed heavily online. Love that. So like mentioned in the Cut article, the fact that these models that were there, a lot of the ones that are in the actual tour movie, uh, were there and were in costume and in character and being models and walking around, not having them on a stage or highlighted seems like an odd choice, frankly. I get it, you're trying to advertise that movie, which is a pre-production and all of that, but you have all these major people here, you're trying to show that like, yeah, we're back, we're coming back in a big way, we are inclusive, we can do these amazing things. This is the new and improved Victoria's Secret. And instead, Instead you do this kind of like trailer drop. I don't know. I think it's an interesting choice and I don't know how I feel about it really. I, well, I do not, I feel, but I don't like it. I don't think this was a good use of things. And also it doesn't help the comparisons. I don't think when you didn't show us exactly what you could do. So about Doja Cat. <laughs> so Doja Cat is doing a musical break in the actual tour movie, it seems. That's been confirmed. So she walked the pink carpet at the Victoria's Secret event. Now, um, the dress she's wearing is a black floor length dress. Frankly, it's much more plain than I'm used to seeing from her. Doja Cat, in my opinion, is very much a chaotic fashion girly, and that's said as a compliment. She commits to it. She commits to a look, doing full Swara Geek Fistals all over her body, doing a full cat look for the Met Gala, you know, all of that. I love when she commits to it. Her doing this fairly plain look for the Victoria's Secret show, I thought was an odd choice. She has it styled, she's wearing sunglasses, she's got, uh, I do like that it highlights her tattoos, frankly, but overall it just doesn't seem like what I'm used to seeing from her, if that makes sense. And apparently, she also was not a fan of it. It's crazy when you got a dress on and your whole vagina is out the whole night and the straps on the dress pull your tits all the way down to your knees and all you asked for was a slip dress, but I digress. I'm in my complaining area, my fucking Karen era. A bitch could have got a UTI, but the whole real resilient. The fuck? That's the first post. When I tell you the panty was built into the dress, so when I put it on, the shoulder straps pulled the string up through my cervix and split me like a block of sharp cheddar cheese. A bitch never thought she could get manhandled by a piece of fat. I'm sorry. It's so good. <laughs> the panty on the contraption took me under the bleachers and ran sad my face. I'm so sorry. It's the fact that she's, <laughs> she looks beautiful in the dress. She's stunning, but also there's another angle here where she's like, she's clearly uncomfortable and like, she's clearly trying to like bend at the knees a little bit. It looks like now that could just be walking, but uh, she does look to be uncomfortable in it. She's not just like, like, oh yeah, I'm wearing your dress. She's in their movie. <laughs> so um, I'm sure people are sweating now because she's not in the playing nice stage <laughs> anymore. It seems they did a whole bit as well, where they had the angels kind of doing like model off duty look where they were wearing their wings out and about. I'm not against that because the model off duty look is very popular. Uh, we see that constantly, not just because of TikTok, but even before TikTok, people loved watching uh, paparazzi shots and seeing paparazzi photos from New York Fashion Week castings and seeing what the models would pull up in and all of that. People loved those. Oh my God, I love those too. I would be like, oh my God, that skirt off a bike, what? Like it's, I loved that, okay. And so I can see what they were trying to go for, but unfortunately what we're seeing as well is the kind of, there's an off duty look to it that I think did didn't really work. It just looks lazy more than anything. You know, it's not like the, you know, everyday glamour that I think people wanted to see maybe from something like this. And I think that's kind of what people are having a lot of problems with now about the current Victoria's Secret is the plainness of it. Like I remember the first time I went into a Victoria's Secret, I was in middle school, my friend's mom took me and her. And it was like the first time, it was like they were doing their panty sale or something and I bought a bunch of panties or whatever and I got my first bra from there. The patterns were fun. Like even like their plain panties that like you would get a 14 year old, 13 year old. Like they were still fun and colorful and different versus now, there's a lot of plain stuff and it's kind of a little boring. And I think that that's the problem with a lot of the call outs for companies that are like, fine, you want it inclusive, we're giving you inclusive. And it's like, okay, does lace not work on bigger chests? Because I'm fairly certain it does. You know, like it's, there is still sexy glamour that can fit bigger bodies, you know? And like the, I know it's, you know, in some instances more fabric and all of that, but that doesn't mean it's undoable. It's bullshit, frankly. It's, it's lazy, it's cheap, and fuck you. <laughs> it's so fucking annoying. There's a way to do this. If anything, Savage X Venti showed that you can still have gorgeous pieces 
from the fashion show and all that on bigger bodies. And it's not a fucking problem. It, they, these aren't boring looks. I'm gonna see the movie when it comes out. I'm gonna watch it uh, because I'm interested. I don't know, doing the movie thing, especially if the models were there, why not do a fashion show while you have the models there? If you're not gonna do an actual show there, you're doing a showing of the clip. So it's like, just like a premiere, like a, a it's not even a premiere, it's a sneak peek. Like I would have done the premiere there for them. You know what I'm saying? Like why you have, you have fashion in your opera house, okay? Which is the, essentially the venue they did. You have the fashion industry there. They want to see you. You have, you have the influencers there. You've got actual buyers and models and actors and actresses and singers and all this stuff there. And, and you don't take that opportunity. Cause like there are people who were like, yeah, this should have been an email. This was a letdown. This is disappointing. It's giving teenage Amanda watching a five hour live stream of a guy making a mural just to see that five seconds of summer is announcing that there's going to be a song dropping, a music video dropping in three days. Not even the music video itself. Like, it's so annoying. Like, God, it's like, look at everything we did just for an announcement. <laughs> it's not worth it, frankly. Like, I agree. This could have been an email, 100%. Because what did you actually do? Like, I don't know why you didn't just show them the movie. I don't get, because it's not a 12 minute movie, right? It's a full movie. So like, why not show the whole thing? And then you have the models there, have them do a, a look, even if it is in the off duty look, like if you do like a, like the wings only, and then like, hey, wear what you want to wear, or even like, we'll give you the lingerie, style it how you want it, like something like that, that would be so cool. And so like, let me show, like have these models show their personality. I think one of the things that a lot of people liked about the Victoria's Secret fashion show for so long, okay, was that the fashion show, there was still an element of fun to the shows, which a lot of fashion no longer has. There's a lot of spectacle now and a lot of gimmicks, which I don't like personally. If done right, it can be done really well. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of things where I think it's like shows now think they need that to have a viral moment, which I don't like, because then we have lackluster looks and lackluster collections. And I just, I'm not a fan of that. But something that, you know, a lot of fashion now is, is the very stiff, walk only to show the garment, you are a walking hanger and that's it. And that's all you can, that's all you get from the models is walking hanger. And that's where you have a lot of criticism from uh, content creators that are fashion or model focused, where they criticize models walks and things like that, because they are told to walk very stiff and to not sway, not sway your hips. So you get this very cardboard cutout looking walk that is probably ideal for showing the garment in a lot of instances, but it's not fun. It's not captivating because they don't want to detract from the clothes. But when it comes to ready to wear looks, allowing models to be a little more fun, movement, sassy, their own natural walk. How would you want to see how this walks? Show us how you want to show this, that type of thing. I think there is a lot of value in that, especially as someone who's thinking of buying something like this, because you can see how the garment itself actually moves on a human body, you know? Not that models aren't human, you get my point, but like there's a value in showing that these models are human and not just walking hangers. That sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. Something may look stunning on a hanger. It looks great in a photo. It looks great when this model is barely walking and is taking very measured steps. But if I'm, you know, running to catch an Uber or a bus or going up the stairs, what's gonna happen, you know? And so I think there's, something to be said for having a little more movement and style and sass and personalization from the models in their walks when showing off a garment. I think you can see also the artistry of the garment and how well it's made and things like that. And I get for runway, some things are a little less, um, no, I take that back. They should be well put together. <laughs> I don't care if you're just doing a runway. They should look good. They should be well assembled. They should be well put together. If a garment breaks on the runway, that is 100% on you. The thing that I think a lot of people valued and what was why the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show was such a um, spectacle for a lot of people. In some instances, the models are still very much like, I'm wearing this garment, look at this garment. But like the Victoria's Secret Angels and all the Victoria's Secret models that participate in the Victoria's Secret fashion show would still have some form of a sass and an attitude. They'd sway their hips more and all of that. And I get it. Lingerie is a different ball game than say most traditional fashion, but there was a funness to that. You know, there was a, not a silliness, that's not the right word, but there was just, there was, um, it was a different type of drama, if that makes sense. You know, it was the glamorous drama, the fun, fun drama, fun drama. Like that in itself was a spectacle, like models having fun on the runway, interacting with the musical guest, 
showing off the garments, showing how the garments moved, how they moved in the garments and all of that, there is a spectacle built into that. And the glamour was just everything that encapsulated that. Victoria's Secret, I think, had a lock on that for years once traditional fashion, essentially not the Victoria's Secret is not traditional fashion, but they're, even as the article said, like the underdogs, there's something to be said about being the fun brand. Now, I don't know why you can't still have that and also have models of different body types. Like I don't get why they're mutually exclusive and why we are doing this whole switch. I don't wanna go ahead and say that this feels performative because we have not seen the actual, the tour yet, okay? So I don't wanna go ahead and say that yet. But I just think the, what we're seeing with the callbacks to, you know, the Savage X Fenty show and all of that, I'm not liking that because it's just kind of calling back to the fact that Rihanna already did this and better. And so you're kind of making yourself into the comparison when people are already going to comparison you anyway. Comparison, compare you. God. Fashion show, I think you still could have done it. Here's how you do both. <laughs> okay, because you have this event, you already have it, you have the venue, you have everything set up. Let's say you don't want it to show the movie then, okay? You want to save the movie for the premiere, that's when the world is gonna see it, there's no sneak peeks, there's no screeners, there's no nothing, we're not doing any reviews, okay? Fine, cool, understandable. You do the little intro, 12 minutes, you probably even could have done less. And then you do the fashion show. Now, whether you do the looks that are gonna be in, cause it's my understanding that the different houses do their own designs, right? So we're seeing not just the looks themselves, we're seeing the, the creative process behind it. So then I don't think anything is taken away from showing the looks or even some of the looks. Maybe there's like, like how there used to be the fantasy bra moment, you know, in the fashion show where it was like the, the expensive bras. Maybe you don't show the final look, like the main end of show look for the different houses. Maybe you don't do that, but you show everything else. Cause then you can kind of, or at least even like maybe two looks out of five or six or something for each house, you know, something like that. So that people can talk about, you know, the uh, different influences, talk about the different designers, what we're seeing so far. Oh, this one's amazing. I can't wait to see more of this collection. I think that that would have been great, you know, and sure they're walking around, but that's different because then you are naturally going to have people that are missing things. I'm assuming the models were on the looks, right? If the ones that were there, part of the tour, because they said that they were there. So I know they were wearing their wings most of the time, but like, it just seems so pedestrian almost. That's the only word I can think of where it seems like it's not important when they're just walking around like that versus having them on the stage, on the catwalk. You have this massive arena. You have all these people there. You would have solid attention versus everyone's like, oh my God, how's the drinks? You know, like, I, I just think that there's, there's something to be said with putting models on a runway. I just think there's something to be said for that. And I don't think I'm wrong for that. And we're in fashion week. So obviously I'm correct because that's a thing that's happening. And so if you just do like two looks from each collection, you have even a short, it still would be a short night. It would still be a short little show, but you would still be highlighting these different designers and these artists and these different models. So then it's a sneak peek. So you're not giving away what's in the tour entirely, the different looks, but you are building excitement. You're getting chatter. You know, people aren't talking about the fact that Doja Cat didn't like her dress because they're talking about the look. So option number one is you have the actual fashion show. Don't show all the looks. You show some of them to build hype, maybe have the different designers walk out with them also have them walk out, maybe doing their own little thing. I don't know, something like that I think would be fun. They'll have the Victoria's Secret style glamor, all of that. Okay, okay. Option two, you screen the film, you show the whole movie, okay? I'm assuming because it's like a documentary style project that it's not strike breaking. You know, I don't think it's scabbing if you show this in full. I think I could be wrong. I Someone check me. Also, union's wrong, okay? <laughs> if it's not strike breaking to show this in fully, I think you should have done that. You do something, for this type of show that I think would be very radical to do because you invite influencers, you invite actors and uh, artists and fashion people and all of that. And then you say, no phones, no phones. You take their phones away, check them in. Sexy little coat check, but for phones, something crazy. Yes, that's a lot of people, but you do something so dramatic where it's like, oh my God, they took our phones. And then people are wondering why there's no photos, why there's no talking, why there's no posts, why there's nothing. The only images coming out of this event are from your photographers, Getty images, et cetera. Everyone else, they have to talk to each other. A wild concept. And then you show the film in full. I think this works for a variety of reasons. One, journalists are gonna be like, okay, let me paint this picture for you, what I experienced, let me tell you more. You get way more longer write-ups. There's some PR in that, obviously, because you're controlling the images that are coming out. But then also from the influencer perspective, there's this thing right now where I think 
people are finally catching on to this. There are influencers that want to talk about different things and love talking about fashion and beauty and events and things like that. And then there are influencers who are like, I'm glad I'm here. The big deal is that I'm here. Here's a get ready with me because I'm here. There's a photo of me there because I'm here. You just want them to talk about it. That might be all you want. Fine. The advertising is there. The marketing is there. You spend less on marketing budget because you invited an influencer. I get it. But by taking away the phones and them not being able to post while they're there, prove that they were there, you're going to get full breakdowns, full reviews, full, oh my God, let me tell you everything that just happened. Oh my God, this was the wildest experience of my life. Can you guys believe it? Victoria's Secret took my phone. They made me check my phone. Oh my God, here's my little tab from where they took my phone. Get pink tickets, like a little literal coat check for the phones, something cute and sexy, you know, like little, little pink tickets. Okay. Maybe even ribbon, no embargoes obviously on the film itself, but you know, the, the spectacle around how you showed the film would give you so much built-in advertising in my opinion, I think, because you have, you invite fashion, you invite Hollywood, you invite TikTok. <laughs> you barely invite YouTubers, but if you invite me, I would go. <laughs> then everyone is talking about the fact how you didn't let them post. I think there's something to be said for that. I think that would be incredibly well done. And that's just me. And I'm giving you this idea for free. I'm not even making you pay me for it. I'm getting paid in ad dollars from YouTube. Thank you. I just think there's a way to do this. And then also then the show has, there's a mystery on top of the actual, the tour itself, okay? Because you did this very cloak and dagger event versus this nothing event that was very big and musical performances. And here's a clip and that's really it. You know, I, I just think there, there, you, it's too mid, it's too middle. You gotta go one way or the other. You gotta go full fashion show or full movie premiere during fashion week because this hybrid thing where it's like, here's an event, here's the thing to come to. Uh -huh. You can post that you went to a Victoria's Secret show. You know, I just don't think that that's working. Okay, clearly. What do you think? Do you think that there was a way for them to do this that still was very inclusive, that uh, was more reminiscent of the traditional Victoria's Secret fashion show? Do you think that there was a way to do kind of like a sneak peek fashion show by not taking away from the tour? Do you think there was a way to make this as like, a tour premiere while still making it like a big spectacle during fashion week. Let me know, comment down below. Reminder that I have a podcast, the Social Hands podcast. Reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. This episode will be available tomorrow. Reminder, I have merch. I'm not sure if there'll be a design for this one, but I will think about it. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like to on Patreon, let me listen down below. Like, follow me on social media. That'll be all up here. And that's gonna be have all the day. Goodbye. Whether you are a traditional model, standards, plus size, trans, short, tall, what have you, you deserve to feel sexy and glamorous. And I think that that is how Victoria's Secret should have approached this all. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Alan, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris B, Chris P, Crash, China, Corey, Daniela, Ernie, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Justin, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Lex, Lise, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Medic, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Qwerty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry, Zwink.